Logan with Pat. This is the poet. Mary Wallace Blake. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, Mary oh. Alice of Duncan. Percy Mitchell. Would you be... Charles Martin. Uh, Arnold. Welcome to New Kids. Here she is. Sophie Payne. Mima? That's what it says here. Well, here I am. Uh, well, now, uh, 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 why don't we all go uptown for an ice cream? <laughs> Uh, where's your trunk, Sophie? Um, I left it outside. And then we'll all go for a ride in my new automobile. Uh, automobile? Horse and scared. <laughs> what do you see? Call me. My brother Bob in. Megan Davies? Yes. Are you Mrs. Hawthorne? Me? Good oh. gracious, no. Lauren Laird. I chose to be the school teacher. Now, where's your plate? Bloody jungle. Turn off, give you the creeps, eh? This is the land they took from the Indians. You should give it back. How much farther? Oh, just far enough. Talkative one is. Whoa. Why are they all muddy? Oh, we come the back road, shorter. But the bridge is out. I know. But I had two strong lads to help me through, right, boys? Come on, then. Where are their shoes? Oh, there's no point in them ruining them. Save them for Sundays. Get them up to the old work boots. Now, you got a strong back on you. I think you can take one of these sacks of grain into the barn. <laughs> you. Why don't you unharness the horses and rub them down? I don't know how. I'll show you. Once. Hey, I said carry that grain in the barn, you deaf. Mr. Hawthorne's wife is very sick. His sister is helping out. All oh, the days for her to come. Well, here, girl. Take your things off and make yourself useful. Empty this, fill it with clean, hot water. You'll find it on the stove. Here, you'll need these. parts of the sea. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Put it down.
both take it. So the Lord will give him comfort in time. Wishful thinking. I beg your pardon? Oh, yes. You'll find comfort. Damn you! Wash the body. Maybe for God's sake. Well, then you take care of it. Obviously, I'm not needed or wanted around here. That's right. You've got a shop to run. I closed up shop for three days so I could come out here and help you. Well, feel free to leave. Anyway, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Mostly taketh. It's a wonderful place to be, with green mountains and high sage hedges and misty. field every spring as if they'd been planted by the devil all winter long we wrestle them all summer long there's enough of them <laughs> when i was a boy you could hardly see the ground but you keep working we wrestle not with powers nor with principalities but with the devil himself it's wolf hawthorne Burying his wife today. Died in childbirth. <sighs> All right, come on, keep moving. Oh. Wins prizes for them things. Maybe that's why they eat them bleed inside better than we do, eh, Doc? They're a bleed inside cleaner, too. <laughs> that's it. Good girls. Heads, it's the east, tails, it's the wild west, eh, mate? Where did McDonald take away our boots? The bastard. These are too tight, they're killing me. What do you say we make a bolt for it, eh, mate? Out west, maybe, to where the gold is. We do all right. With these blisters, I'd have to crawl. You know how men love butter tarts? Hmm? I'm not used to doing this, Auntie Hazel. My father had servants. No? Oh, who would your father be? He's the Prince of Wales. Who? The Prince of Wales. I hope you know that's not true. I look just like him, except I haven't got a beard. Another cup of flour. Thanks, Joey. Are you a mummy now? Pardon? Are you a mummy now? No. More like a big sister, don't you think? Joey? Come on, help me pick them up. Come on. I don't 
don't like you. Not decent. Girl of her age, in the house, alone with a man. Folks will talk. My little brother. Not much past a spring chicken. Brewster, if you please. And don't make this a laughing matter. You know how they talk about home children. Catherine needed help. I didn't want her. Well, then send her back. Not that it's any of my business. Well, Abby, if there's anything on earth which you don't consider your business, I'd like to see it. The price is marked, ma'am. As far as I can see, Wolf, you've got three choices. One, I close up shop and move in with you, which I won't do. Two, you sell the farm and move in with me, which you won't do. Wouldn't be able to call my soul in. That shriveled up little soul of yours, you wouldn't be losing much. Or three. You marry a decent woman and give those children a proper mother. I don't know any decent women. You know Lorna Laird. I'm preaching on Psalm 18. Psalm 18? Mm -hmm. But what hymn? It's 38. 38? Father, we sang 38 last Sunday. Very well, then. I'll leave the hymn entirely up to you. Right. And I'll leave the preaching entirely up to you. I know a surprise. Well, a pleasant one, I hope. And why shouldn't that be? Seems I'm not too good company. Wilf, I'm sorry. Boys! Boys! Mr. MacDonald! Pleasure to know you're looking after these two boys. And we had a nice chat. I had no idea Gareth wanted to become a doctor, so I've invited him over to my study. My father was a doctor. south, you turn east and the Hawthorns is the second farm there. You can't miss it. Would we be paid extra? Paid? I'm the one who should be paid. I'm losing your work. But we owe it to help a neighbor, huh? I hope they like it. Yeah, nice, lovely. Really nice. Oh, Auntie Ethel made me two new dresses. They're really nice. But she's like me, really, because she likes bright colors. I'm the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, she made me two new hats as well. Nothing like this, Megan. <laughs> Megan, what's this? Da! Where did you get the hat? Where did you get the soil? Isn't it a nobby one and just a proper style? Well, I should like to have one just the same as that. 
Where'er I go, they shout hello. Where did you get that hat? Woo! That worked up a mighty appetite. Yeah. Where do I sit? On your butt. Hey, mate, see something? Want to try it? Go on. Huh? <laughs> What's this? Raspberry Delight. It said in the book it's a cooling drink. It's got vinegar in it. it must have emptied the chamber pots. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you've left your manners in the barn. Dig in. First we will say grace. It's good bread, good meat, good God, let's eat. <laughs> For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Creeps being in the room where she died. My mother died in the house where we lived. Wonder what's in here. Megan, look at this. Her clothes are still here, not giving away or nothing. That's bad luck, that is. Look at this one. Oh, try it on, Megan. Oh, no, we shouldn't. Oh, come on, it's lovely. Only a minute it'll take. No. It's only pretend. Quite the girl Wilf's got himself there, eh? <laughs> Home girl down to Tucker's made herself a fortune. <laughs> no Tucker caught her at it out back behind the barn. <laughs> Mama! Sure, well, big one. that dress again. I don't know why we muck about here, mate. We could be anywhere. Where are we going this time? We can head out west to where the Indians and the gold is. Gold lying around on the ground. All you have to do is pick it up. Oh, yeah. Well, we could go to Montreal, get rich, live in one of them mansions, eh? Or go to sea, whaling and that. You're a dreamer. Come in here, quick. Let the bastard wait. We're working! I said get in here now! Somebody get some water. I'll go. You, come on over here. If you want to be a doctor, you should have a look at this. See, sometimes they get all twisted up inside, huh? Then they uh, come out hind feet first and uh, choke to death. <coughs> See, those are the contractions. You got to go with them. You got to work with them. Work with them now. Not against her. There. Come on, here she comes now. Come on now. That's it. That's it. Come on. Ah, there we go. Come on. Come on. Out we come. <laughs> If I can save it, can I have it? What do I have to do to get a three years thick Welsh skull? You don't save a runt, even if you could. 
it's not worth it. But if I can't, is it mine? <laughs> well, suit yourself. Jesus bids us shine with a pure and clear light Like a little candle burning in the night In this world of darkness, Jesus bids us shine You in your small corner coming. Yes, the Major. Oh, no, it'll take about an hour. <laughs> Told him you should have taken a horse. The boot man's coming. Well, la-di-da. I bet there'll be some rummaging in the cupboards around here. What about Wilf? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's his problem. The contract says she was to go to a proper family. Pardon me. But the contract indicates that the girl was to be placed in the home of a Mr. and Mrs. Wilfred Hawthorne, a home with a mother and a wife. When she arrived here, there was a Mrs. Hawthorne. I'm sorry, but... Say what you mean, Mr. Baker, and get it over with. Mr. Hawthorne, I'm trying to explain our policy to you because I might have no other choice than to remove Megan from this house. I'm not accusing you, I'm asking you. Is there no other woman in this house? Well, not for me. I've had enough tea this week to fill the barge. I'll just get dinner started. Major Baker! What is it, Megan? I found you, sir. About my little brother Robin. There's nothing to worry about there. He's in good hands. Can I write, sir? To whom, Megan? Robin, sir. He's my only brother. He's with an excellent couple, Megan. They can give him many advantages. He's been exceptionally lucky. I'm sure you want him to settle in and be happy with his new family. I do, sir. So maybe it's better for him to forget the past. I know it's difficult for you. Thanks, Abby. I'm in your debt. True, a word was never spoken. But I can't keep thundering out here every time the boot man comes. And boot man or no boot man, mm -hmm. folks are going to talk. Mm -hmm. Thick slice with thin one. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Would you like some potatoes, Gareth? Momo? Tea, Leonard? Oh, yes, please, ma'am. You're looking well. Fresh air, hard work. Put the muscle on them. They seem to be settling in well. We uh, try to make them feel at home. They fit in here better than girls. None of that kind of trouble. Not with them. Of course, quite a job keeping them clean and tidy, you know? Good shoes and all. Would you uh, like another roll, Leonard? Oh, yes, please, ma'am. <laughs> when you're finished here, Gareth, what were you going to do? Medicine, sir. 
I understand Reverend Laird has been tutoring you. He seems rather impressed. The boy with your background and intelligence should not be allowed to go to waste. Well, it depends what you call that. Waste. With the proper education, Gareth could go to medical school. And who's going to pay for that? I'd have my pay, sir. And what's safe for me? For my work here. I've got a calf. How did you get a calf? Mr. McDonald gave it to me. Very generous, McDonald. I hope Gareth appreciates, as you seem to, the economic advantage this calf will provide. Why, in two years, when you're ready to enter the university, it might well pay your tuition. You try to do right by them. As long as they do their part, work hard. Oh, I'll work hard, sir. Of course you will. silver spoon, one quarter off the collection plate, one I found, one silver salt shaker, courtesy Mrs. McDonald. One of these days you'll get caught, you know. Me? <laughs> get caught? What's that? I don't know, Doc. Can't read, remember? Where'd you get this? Bootman. He gave it to you? We can't all be doctors. Some kind of a dress book for the home kids. It's worthless. Why do you keep it? Couldn't get it back in his pocket. I don't know. Maybe we can have a bleeding reunion. Hold on to your hats, ladies. <laughs> coming along. Working harder? Oh, when well, I have time, sir. That's the ticket. Per ardua ad astra, eh? Right, sir. I've got this with Tony. It's almost done. That's easy enough. I suspect I'll need some help with the Virgil. Now, don't work too hard. A young man your age needs some recreation. Mensana incorpore sano, as they say. <laughs> Come on, we haven't got all day. There's really no need to bother, Mr. Hawthorne. It's quite a short distance. Well, I wouldn't want you to get your petticoats dirty, Miss Laird. Oh, if I come to a mud puddle, I just pick up my skirts and jump over it. If I had a cow like that, I'd put a halter on her. Luckily, I'm not a cow. Uh, I noticed. Perhaps you'd like to... Uh... Come over to the house this afternoon for tea. My father and I would be most happy to see you. Let's see about a story for tonight. Where's our father? Visiting. coming back. God is taking care of him. Is he dead? No. He's looking for a mother for you. Why can't you be a mother? I'll choose a story for tonight. Once upon a time, the marriage feast took place in a splendid palace. Hello, Robin. How are you? I hope that you are settling in well. The farm that I'm staying at is very nice. There's chickens and dogs and horses and a goat. Dear Robin, I hope this letter can find you. Stay away from me! You devil! What? Oh! You slobbering, godforsaken! 
bald-headed witless. Dung-footed. Garbage-eating beast. Look! I thought you had me, didn't you? You evil eyes. Cross-footed. Devil-loving. I'm sorry to leave the party too early. My dear, I haven't decided. Oh. Leaking. Yes. Never know when the minister's daughter's going to visit. Come down. I have to fly down. Yes, I'll fly down. Like an angel. Waste of perfectly good whiskey. Uh, true, her word was never spoken. <laughs> it's all the glass out. No, I left it all in. <laughs> Hope he didn't puncture his lung. Could all internal bleed in. Spare me the details. I thought he was dead. Mm. When he wakes up in the morning, he'll wish he was. Oh. All he needs is some whiskey to kill the pain. Uh, there'll be no more of that tonight. Keep talking, man. Here's one for you. What's well, hot as fire, uh. cold as ice, slippery as the devil, and half as nice. Eh? <laughs> Women, lad. Especially the religious ones. They lead you on. It's finished. Yeah. Oh, come on, I'll take care of him. Nothing new to me. My old mum and dad used to drink night and day. We're probably still alive. And I just laugh and twice as ugly. Come on, mate. Good night, all. Uh, oh, my father was the keeper of the Eddie's own life. He slept in a mermaid one fine night. Right. Alan who came up spring free. Yeah. There were worse fishes than the other one would be. Yo, he will, and he'll be me. Nothing like a life on the road we see. Now, fuck her off. Good night, mate. Thanks. Um. Out like a light and sleeping like a baby. <laughs> Better get back. Well, need any more drunks taken care of? Name's Len Hawkins. Remember. Come on. You don't understand, do you? Could you stitch them up for Very me? Very funny. If you don't become a doctor, you can always become a tailor, mate. It's brilliant surgery, mate. Now, where the hell are you two been? We was at Will Forthorpe's. Where? We was at Will What were you doing there? We were just... You shut up. I asked him the question. We was helping him. He's not entitled to any help from you. He ain't paying for it. Well, you ain't either, as far as I can see. Well, you cheeky little bastard. Unless you're counting that old slop you feed us. You better shut your mouth, you little English gutter snipe. Shut yours, mate. It's big enough. We were just... You stay out of this. I'm not taking any back talk from you. <laughs> Your old mum could it harder than that. Well, well, then try this. <laughs> Well, I didn't 
think you had it in you. Well, we'll settle this. In the morning, huh? Gutter snipe didn't have the guts to stay. So you will be doing the work of two. Heads, it's the East Tales, it's the Wild West. I'd like you to have this, Gareth. You can read it in your spare time. Don't have much spare time, sir. Yes, thank you. I've written to the University of Ottawa. I was telling you that the dean, Dr. Mitchell, is a friend of mine, and he thinks that things look very promising. Oh, thank you, sir. has to pay me and the sale of my car, I can go to medical school. So you'll be leaving soon? Oh, no, I got a three-year contract with McDonald. It's not forever. I still wish she'd let you go to ordinary school like me. Miss Led says that in the whole school, I'm best at spelling and poetry. At English, maybe. But what about Welsh? Which Welsh poet wrote this line? And when I was my goal I did all by from this clay Llewellyn. Bryn Llewellyn. Andrews. Gareth Andrews. Me. I, I better be going. It's all right. Hawthorne's in the pastures. Anyway, I only work for him. He doesn't own me. Does he treat you all right? I'm very fortunate. He only yells at me when I do something stupid. So he yells at you all the time, then? Gareth. You didn't know anything about cattle. I read up on them. Where'd you find a book on cattle? From Reverend Led. Oh, yes. <laughs> All knowledge cometh from the Lord, or from his chosen, huh? The Bible also says that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. See, it fools a man into believing he can rise above his God-given station in life. You wouldn't spend too much time with Reverend Laird. I get your work done. A man cannot serve two masters.
business. It's the boots. The boy can't wear them. Oh, there's nothing the matter with them. Funny wearing them yet. They don't fit. All right. I'll tell you what. You want new boots? You can buy them yourself. Got any money? Five dollars. And the money you owe me. All right, I'll make you a deal. You can have the new boots for the uh, five dollars you want at the fair. What do you say? No. Oh. All right, you can have the boots. I'll, uh, I'll just take the calf. No! <laughs> Call the eight dollars you owe me for the broken harness and ten dollars for the silverware. The stuff that that friend of yours took along with him. We should have the doctor in. He's gonna be all right. We're gonna make a man here yet, huh? He was an animal you'd have the vet in. An animal can't take care of himself. Not like a boy who's gonna be a doctor. You wanted a son once. It's a good thing God never gave us one. What the hell do you know about raising boys? Stop! Hold on to that! Whoa, boy! Whoa! Keep the reins tighter there, boy! Tighter! Don't let that horse get away! Stand up! Steady. I let the poison out. Tighter. 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 Ah! They won't go your atrocity. God doesn't care about feet. He doesn't care about anything. You're speaking like a heathen, like a Christian. The people around you are supposed to be Christian. I'd rather be a heathen. Boots? Yes. But McDonald keeps them for Sunday. Damn him. Something's got to be done about that man. Look, Mr. Hawthorne. I can take care of myself. be out of bed before Christmas. <laughs> I don't know what's more useless, you or this calf. How long has he been like this? Uh, about a week. He's not eating. What's wrong with it? I thought you were the expert. I tried to tell you. Doesn't matter how well you treat it, it's still a runt. It should have been put down. Where are you going? For my blankets. I'll spend the night here. <laughs> you try to be a martyr, lad? You freeze to death. It's as cold in my room as it is here. Well, suit yourself. I didn't go here. Ah. Uh, hostile.
Excuse me, Sophie. Oh, what is it? Is it a new dress? No. What is it, a hat? Socks. Socks? It's a stocking. Oh. Give me a stocking. Oh, it's a baby. I never had a doll before. It looks real, doesn't it? Such a beautiful little baby, Sophie. My Margaret Firth. Fat little cheeks and rosebud lips. Bobby Bachdell. What are you going to name her, Sophie? Don't name her, Sophie. You can be rest assured that she will have a loving Christian home. Her new mother will name her. Say goodbye, Sophie. Sophie, say goodbye. is in the barn. It's Christmas. My place is out there. You'll come around. This calf just died this morning. Found it out there frozen stiff as a board. Couldn't survive. I tried to tell him. Him saying, Lord, 
When saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, that we did not minister unto thee? Then he shall answer, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not unto one of these, the least of my brethren, he did it not unto me. Major Baker, did you get the letter I wrote a month ago? I addressed it to the London Emigrating Homes in Toronto. I still have not heard about my brother Robin. Do you spell emigrating with an I or an E? Oh, damn if I know. Sister Megan. Come on, Robin. Remember. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, kid. So I wouldn't be bothering you if it wasn't a matter of life and death. Now, don't you worry, sir. I ain't touching you for money. I have here with me my little cousin, which is the son of my uncle and aunt, who were missionaries in Africa. And they died of the swamp fever, leaving nothing but this poor little lad who was struck deaf and dumb by the, uh, African deaf and dumb disease. And he don't speak nothing but African deaf and dumb finger stuff. Show him, kid. And he can't make a soul understand him, even myself, who knows the bare rudiments of the case. Now, he wants to visit his only relative in New Canaan. But oh, we, we tried this before, but he, uh, on the count of his deafness, he went clear to the Rocky Mountains and back. He didn't need to stop being called. Now, all I ask of you, sir and ma'am, is that you put him off at the right stop, New Canaan, with his sister. Engrave it in your memory, sir, and all else will be provided for. <laughs> now, look. It's not much to ask for, Herbert. Deaf and dumb. Think if it were you. It's your big chance, kid. Remember what I told you, right? Thank 
Would you kind sir and ma'am, you're making them dead missionaries very happy. Hey, wait a minute, you're not, you're not gonna leave them. You came and remember, sir, don't forget. He didn't tell us the boy's name. Officer. Officer. tell me anything. They won't tell me who your brother's been sent to or who he's staying with. I suppose that's their policy. I don't see what else I can do. Here, let me help you with this, at least. Leave it alone. Oh, it's all right. I should help you with Leave this. Leave it alone. Use these pegs, now. Oh, I'll put these pegs. Go away and leave me alone. No. I want to Make be it. alone. No, you're after I don't care. I really did try. You have to understand you that. You did try. How did you know? It's good of you, Abby. No sense in waste. Still a lot of wear in that material. Looks almost new. This'll cheer her up. How old she be then? Carol, who knows? Forgot to ask. You did invite Lorna Laird, didn't you? I forgot that too. See you there. Two spools of cotton, please. See if you can match that. I heard that homegirl of his, she's, um, in the family way. No question, it was the boy who stayed with us. And how do you know this? It's all over town. I mean, you only have to look at her to know there's something. I've looked at her. I don't see anything. You will. <laughs> she was always nosing around him. Over to our place, you could hardly shoo her away. Those home girls, they're, um, they're like that. All the same. Of course, I'd hate for it to reflect badly on your brother. You know how people talk. If it's true, which I doubt, about you. That's what they do. They go into their little parlours and shut the door. <laughs> they think they can't talk about it in front of you, even though you were right there when they... <sighs> this dress is beautiful, Megan. It's so lovely. She must have cut it down for you. Of course, it's nothing like the ones we had back at the palace, but why are they talking about me? Oh, come on, Megan. Everybody knows. I don't think we can ignore it any longer. Any way you look at it, it's trouble. Megan, what did he do it to you then? In the barn, was it? That's where it happens, you know. That's where it always happens. In the barn where there's nobody around to hear. Sophie, don't. Megan, you don't have to pretend with me.
I guess you want to know what Abby had to say. I expect if she had something to tell me, she'd have done it herself. You have to go. What? I think it'd be best if you left. That's not Abby's decision, that's mine. But I've still got two years left. It says in the contract. No, 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 forget the contract. What have I done wrong? Not much. Just living alone here with me. They say you're in the family way. Who says? Oh, who cares? Everyone, the whole goddamn town. What do you say? Hmm. I'll marry you. Well, somebody's got to marry you. So you'll marry the poor home girl. No, no, you're not a girl anymore. You're a woman. And you don't owe me anything, so at least you can do as you can tell me. Oh, I see. Was it Karen? If that's what you think of me, then there's no point in me staying here one minute longer. I hope God will forgive you, because I won't. Well, where do you think you're going? Home. And where, may I ask, is that? God will provide one. Well, what's wrong with this one? It's yours. Just keep it. Oh, well, then go ahead and leave. You home, girl. Go on. Go on, pack your trunk. Take your three chains of the gold and clear out. Don't forget your Bible and your hymn book and you, you can keep the new dress. Here. This is yours, too. I say I wouldn't marry her, so I said I wanted to marry her. keeps his promise. Small package sent, 1205 Express, Tuesday. You're not going with her then, Mr. Hawthorne? I think she wants to be alone. Do you know what he looks like? Alexandra, I know. I'm trying. Try harder. Can I have your attention, please? Uh, I have a very small boy here, and he's uh, he's the victim of the African deaf and dumb disease. Would you would you take a good look at him, see if any of you recognize him? Uh, his parents were missionaries in Africa. He's an orphan boy. All aboard! Uh, and he, he was struck deaf and dumb by the African deaf and... The train's leaving! It's leaving very shortly! Um, his parents were missionaries in Africa. He's an orphan. A gentleman always keeps his promise. Tell Gareth off still open. Gold waiting.
got lost. Sophie, hmm? I think your father, the Prince of Wales, would have liked to dance. What? What? You would have been banished. There would have been flags, a coach, six horses. Sophie. Sometimes, I like to pretend. I think this calls for an ice cream. Yes. Ladies, your carriage awaits. 